Hi everyone and thanks for joining. This is the Dragonfly Volunteer Monitoring Intermediate Training for the Forest Preserve District of DuPage County. The goal of this training is to cover a few additional species that we didn't cover in the intro training. These species are a little bit more rare and a little bit less common but still might be observed as you go out monitoring this season. So here's a list of species that we'll be covering in this training. It's about 12 additional dragonfly species and about 6 additional damselfly species. The first dragonfly species we want to talk about is the eastern amberwing. And thankfully this one's fairly easy to identify. Mainly because they are one of the smallest, if not the smallest, dragonfly species we get in the county. So they're very small. They also tend to fly very low over ponds. You generally only see them maybe a few inches above the water. The males of this species have very distinct amber-colored wings, and you can see that in the picture on the bottom right. The females are a little bit different. Their wings have amber and black, so they're not a solid amber color, but instead they have black bands or black spots with a little bit of amber around them. And you can see that in the picture on top, that's the male on the front, and then the female with those black and amber spots on the back. The next dragonfly we'll cover is the dot-tailed whiteface, and again, this one's a fairly distinct species, fairly easy to recognize if you see it. It's also a fairly small species, um, a little bit bigger than the eastern amberwing, but not as large as some of the other species you'll see out there. The males have a bluish-blackish body without any body markings. Females have a blackish and yellow body. And you can see in the picture, the female towards the right has a few yellow spots on the side of the abdomen. But what's really distinct about this species is that they have a white face or a white mask. And you can see that very clearly in both the male and female. So if you see a smaller dragonfly, darkly colored, no wing markings, and a very distinct chalky white face, you know that you're looking at a dot-tailed white face. Next, we'll talk about the pennants, and we'll cover two species, the calico pennants and then the Halloween pennants. So the calico pennants, you can see the pictures of them on the top left and right. The males have black bodies with red markings on the abdomen, and the wings have black tips and basal spots, which are a little bit of a mixture of black and red. Females, which you can see on the top right, are colored very similarly to males but essentially you're taking out all the red coloring and replacing it with yellow. So the female bodies are black with yellow markings and the female wings have black tips and then basal spots that are black and yellow. The Halloween pennants you can see on the bottom. The males, which is the one on top, has amber wings that have reddish blackish stripes on them. So not spots like you see with the calico pennant, but with the Halloween pennants, the wings have stripes. And then the female Halloween pennant, which you can see on the bottom, again, you replace that amberish reddish coloring with yellow, and that's what the female looks like. So they'll have wings that have black stripes and a little bit of yellow color to them. Now let's take a look at the wandering glider. So this species is a little bit more rare in our county. It's a medium-sized species with a very stout, thick body. They aren't very long, but they are fairly thick as far as dragonflies go. The body is mostly yellow, and you can see that on the abdomen. It's primarily yellow. Uh, the abdomen is tapered, so it comes to a fairly fine point, and there are no wing markings. Now, what you'll probably notice most about this species is how it flies. It's a very strong flyer. It constantly flies, so you don't see it settle down too often. But most importantly, it flies very high up. So generally, a lot of the dragonfly species we get out here will fly above your head by a few feet. But the wandering gliders, you usually see them about 20 feet or more above you. 
So now let's take a look at the Meadowhawks, which are among the most common dragonflies in DuPage County, as well as some of the most difficult to identify, simply because so many species look very similar to one another. So in general, Meadowhawks are small dragonflies. They're not very strong flyers. We usually find them perched on vegetation in wetlands and marshy areas and they all have red coloration to their bodies, usually a pretty distinct bold red color. So the first species I'll talk about briefly is the ruby meadowhawk, and we see a picture of that on the top. Unfortunately, those are very hard to identify to species level, as they can easily be confused with another species we have in the area, the cherry-faced meadowhawk, and they also don't have any very distinct markings. They don't have distinct body markings and they don't have distinct wing markings. So that is one of our more common but also more troubling species to identify. A little bit easier is the white-faced meadowhawk. That's the picture in the middle. So you can see again, smaller dragonfly, no distinct wing markings, red body, but they have a very distinct chalky white mask or face so those are generally easy to identify if you can get a good image or a good look at the front of them and the front of their face. Finally, we have the band-winged meadowhawk. And again, those thankfully have a fairly unique identifier in that they have these amber bands on the base, particularly of the hind wings. You might see a little bit of that amber color on the forewings, but primarily you're looking for that amber color on the base of the hind wings. And if you see that on a meadowhawk, on a small red dragonfly, you can be fairly confident that you're looking at a band-winged meadowhawk. Now let's talk about the mosaic darners. So just like the green darner, these are some of the larger species we have in the county. And I'll talk about two species right now, the lance-tipped and the shadow darner. Now, mosaic darners are generally characterized by having a speckled color pattern on the bodies. And you can see that in both the lance tip, which is the image on the left, and the shadow darner, which is the image on the right. Now, unfortunately, what you'll probably notice is that these two species look extremely similar to one another. And they are definitely difficult to identify in the field. So with these species, or most mosaic darners, I would strongly recommend taking pictures, particularly if you can get them, clear pictures of the thorax, especially those stripes on the side. Take those home later and try and identify them later in the day. Again, they can be very difficult to identify down to species level in the field. So the major difference between the lance-tipped and the shadow darners is fairly small, but with close observation you can see it. Essentially what you're looking at is those thoracic stripes. In the lance tip darner, if you look at those stripes, they start to get slightly wider, slightly more expanded as you move up closer to the wings. So you would say they expand dorsally. If you look at the shadow darner on the bottom, it has those same stripes on the thorax, but they just don't get quite as large as you move up towards the wings. Also, and this one's a little subjective, you'll see that the lance tip darner has just slightly more blue coloration on those first abdominal segments closest to the wings, whereas the shadow darner doesn't have quite as much blue. So find distinctions and best observed when you have some time at home looking at clear images like these. Finally, for the dragonflies, we have the club tails, which are some of the most distinct, but also some of the rarest species we have in the county. Now, all club tails are characterized by having distinct enlarged terminal abdominal segments. Essentially, they have a club on the end of their tail, which is where they get their name from. We find almost all species in this group near running water. And I'll talk about two different species right now. We have the plains club tail, and that's the one up top. And then we have the riverine club tail. That's the picture on the bottom. So the biggest difference that you'll notice is that the plains club tail, the one on top, has yellow thoracic stripes. So you can see it has distinct black and yellow patterning on its thorax. If you compare that to the riverine club tail, they have almost an entirely yellow thorax. They do have some black, 
but pretty much it's solid yellow on much of the thorax. In addition, the riverine club tail has yellow hind femurs. So if you look at those back legs, you'll see that the tops of the legs closest to the body are yellow. Compare that to the plains club tail, and you don't see any yellow on the legs. Moving on, we're going to start looking at damselflies, and we're going to start with probably the easiest species to identify here in the county, the ebony jewelwing. So, unlike most damselflies and dragonflies, which we find in open, sunny habitat, we actually find the ebony jewelwings usually in wooded streams, so in more shaded habitat. Now, what's very distinct about these is, number one, the metallic colored bodies. In these images, it looks like a metallic green or yellow. It depends on how the light hits them. Sometimes they might look like an iridescent blue or purple as well. But also, you'll notice the wings in both the males and females have distinct black coloring. In the males, the wings are entirely black, and that's the image on top. In the females, only the tips are black, but again, these are very distinct. If you see a damselfly that has a shiny metallic body and any black on the wings, you can immediately tell you're looking at an ebony jewel wing. Next we have the fragile forktail. It's a very common species in our county, very small, and because of that can be difficult to identify. But there is one feature about them that can help you narrow them down from other damselflies. So if you look at both images, you'll see that on the shoulder, on the top of the thorax, they have these stripes that tend to look like exclamation marks. And you can see that closer to the wings, there's a small spot of color, and then that's broken up, and then a longer stripe of color. And that's why we say it looks like an exclamation mark. So if you see a very small damselfly, and it has that kind of broken up pattern to the thoracic stripe, you can be pretty confident that you're looking at a fragile forktail. Next we have the spread wings. So in general the spread wings are some of the larger damselflies that we see and they're usually characterized by having their wings open when they rest, meaning they don't really fold the wings above their body like most damselflies do. Instead they hold them mostly out to the side, more similar to like a dragonfly. And you can see that in both of these pictures where the wings are a little bit raised, but mostly out to the side. Now, there's two species I want to mention. One is the emerald spread wing, and you'll see that on top. And it gets a name because it has a generally metallic colored body, very similar to the ebony jewel wing, except it does not have any wing markings. And again, as a spread wing, it holds its wings out to the side. These are also fairly stocky dragonflies, so not only are they generally large and long, but they have fairly thick abdomens as far as damselflies go. You also have the slender spread wing, and that's the image on the bottom. So what's most characteristic about these is that they have a pale yellowish gray shoulder stripe on the thorax. And you can see that fairly clearly in this image, where behind the eye, they have that yellowish grayish stripe on the thorax. That's fairly distinct. Finally, we have the bluets, which are, without a doubt, some of the most difficult damselflies to speciate. The problem is very similar to what we see with the meadowhawks for dragonflies, in that there are lots of species of bluets in the county, and many of them look very similar to one another. So I'm just going to point out two species right now, and that's the stream bluet, that's the picture on top, and then the familiar bluet, and that's the picture on the bottom. So the stream bluet, what you'll see is that the abdomen is actually primarily black, and it just has small spots of blue, or actually small rings of blue, on top. They also have very thin shoulder stripes, so that stripe on the thorax behind the eye is fairly thin when compared to other damselfly species and other bluet species. In comparison, we also have the familiar bluet. So if you look at this one, you'll see the abdomen is actually primarily blue with black rings on it. So kind of the opposite of the stream bluet in terms of coloration. 
and the shoulder stripes are much thicker and more noticeable in this species than the stream bluet. This concludes the intermediate training. So hopefully you learned something, and hopefully you gained some familiarity with these less common species that we have in the county. Again, good luck out there, and hopefully you see some of these while you're out doing your monitoring. Thank you for your time.